I bet you can't click the button in time. Wait, what is it? Perf oh, wait, I think I just saw it flash for a second. Wait, is it talking about this button over here? Oh yeah, I just saw it again. Okay, well, it looks like this is a challenge that this sign is trying to tell me, and I don't want to back down from a challenge, so I'm going to try and press this button. Oh, oh wait, I just missed it. Okay, wait, let me try. Oh, oh, I just missed it again. Okay, hold on. Come on. Go. Oh, this is playing tricks with me. Let me try it again. Uh, oh my god. Why do I do this to myself? All right. Let's think about what just happened for a minute. So first thing I noticed was that this sign over here has text displayed on it, but this sign is a 3D object inside of the workspace. It's not like a GUI screen. It's not like a GUI element in my 2D screen. It's literally a GUI object inside of the 3D workspace plastered onto the sign parts. So that is one interesting thing I've noticed about this. And basically the same thing can go with this uh, part over here that just has this text that has this button that just says boo on it and I'm pretty sure the way we're able to plaster these onto a 3D object is by using what's known as a surface GUI which I guess this is what we will transition to uh, so that we can understand how to implement surface GUIs inside of our Roblox games because this is another GUI element that I was going to cover eventually and I guess now would be the perfect time to discuss how these are implemented inside of our Roblox games. So with that being said, let's go and implement these inside of Roblox Studio. Now that we understand it, let's add these Surface GUIs inside of our game. But you might ask, where do we add these Surface GUIs if we're, let's say, trying to add a Surface GUI to this part, for instance, or if I just went into model and I created a new, a new part and I just quickly decided to uh, scale this up a little bit and also make this anchored so that we have a part ready for if we want to add a screen GUI just like this one over here. You might ask, how does this all work? Well, if you remember what I said earlier, a surface GUI is essentially GUI elements that are attached to a part rather than GUI elements attached to our 2D screen. Because up until this point, when we've been creating GUI elements, we've been putting them inside of starter GUI and we've just created a screen GUI. And then inside of that screen GUI, we've created whatever element that would display on our 2D screen. This doesn't exactly work the same way as we're used to, because we're trying to essentially make the part the screen itself. We're not trying to add elements to our own player screen, uh, but instead inside of the 3D world, inside of a specific part that we want to add the GUI element to. It, it won't work the same way as we've been doing up until this point. So we're gonna have to do a different method. So I'm going to delete the screen GUI that we've um, just added. So to answer the question of where we should put the surface GUI, like I mentioned, is we should put it directly in the part that we're trying to display GUI elements in. So on the right side of the screen, let's rename our part so that we know um, the part that we're specifying. So we're gonna say surface part, and then we're going to go to the right side, hit the plus sign, and we're going to insert a surface GUI. Hit enter. And as you can see, we've inserted a surface GUI, but there seems to be nothing showing on this uh, part. And that's because the surface GUI basically acts as a container for all the, the, the GUI elements that we're going to place inside of our part. So it's very similar to a screen GUI as it's basically a container for these GUI elements. So now we're gonna, so now what we're gonna do is hit the plus sign and we're just simply going to add in our own GUI elements, like for instance, a text label. So as you can see, our text label has been added and it shows right here on the, the top left of the part rather than our screen, this uh, text label. And if we decide to move around the 3D workspace, then we can see perspectively that it's on this side of the part and we can only see this GUI element from this side of the part and not and we can't see it universally like we can on our 2D screen. So that is essentially the primary use of surface GUIs is that we can add these GUI elements onto a specific part rather than having them appear on our 2D screen. 
But now that we have this, let me introduce you to some properties that you may find useful. And the first property I want to introduce to you is this property down here called a derny. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, but basically what a derny is, is that this is the property that we set to specify which part are we trying to attach this surface GUI onto. Now, obviously, uh, the Adderney here would be the surface part, which is this thing right here, um, which is essentially just the parent of the surface GUI. And you might notice that the Adderney property is actually left blank. And that's because by default, the Adderney of the surface GUI is whatever the parent of the surface GUI is. So the parent of the surface GUI is the surface part. So automatically Roblox is going to say that the Adderney for this part is going to be the surface part. But let's say we had a model where we have multiple parts and we needed one surface GUI to be attached to one specific part inside of a model and the surface GUI didn't know which one to specify. This is pretty much where a journey comes in and I'm going to show you how this works. So let's go to workspace and let's hit the plus sign and let's add in a model. So in this model, I'm going to put the surface part inside of here and I'm going to duplicate the surface part and then move it alongside over here. Uh, let's open up the surface part and let's delete this surface GUI. So we're just going to have one here. So now we have two surface parts with one surface GUI over here with one not being over here. So if let's say we decided to have this surface GUI's Adderney be this part instead. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this. Next, what I'm going to do is specify this, this surface part specifically. So I'm going to click it. And as you can see, now the surface GUI's Adderney is set to this part rather than this one. And it's now being displayed here rather than over here. So one specific use case I can think of a journey is if you have a health bar that you want to show on top of your player's head, you would specify the Adderney to the player's head so that the Surface GUI knows exactly which part it should be attached to if it's inside of a model. So that is basically what Adderney is and I hope that made sense to you. So you might notice that this text label is being displayed on this side of the part. Now you might ask why is it this part why is it this side specifically that this text label could be in? It's because this Surface GUI has a property known as face, which basically specifies which side of the part should all of these GUI elements contain inside of Surface GUI face. So right now, the face property is set to front, so all of the GUI elements inside of the Surface GUI is facing on the front side of the part, which is in this direction. But what if we wanted to change this to, let's say, a different side? If we were to click on this drop down, there is all these different properties that can tell us which side of the part do we want these GUI elements to show. So we can do the back, which is basically the opposite of front. So as you can see, it's gone from the front, but if we turn around, it's now displayed on the back rather than the front. And we can basically do the same thing with uh, all of the other sides. So top will be displayed over here. And you do kind of have to be careful with uh, changing the sides because you're going to have to realign these parts unless you decide to use scales instead of offsets. And if you don't know what the difference is, you can watch my scales versus offsets video that I made. But let's change this back to front just the way it was before. There's another property that allows us to always see the elements inside of a surface GUI using this property called always on top. Now, if you don't know what I'm trying to get at here, if we let's say decide to turn around on this part, we no longer will be able to see the text label anymore. If we turn back around, then we can see it. But if we're, let's say, somewhere else, like, I don't know, down here underneath the world, then we're not gonna be able to see it. What we can do to make these elements visible, no matter where we are inside of the game, is by setting this property called always on top. So if we check this off, then what's going to happen is that we can be anywhere inside of the game and we'll still be able to see it. So I'm going to go down here and through this floor, we can still see that text label that's displayed on that part. If we go behind a different part, then we can still see uh, the text label being shown uh, through all of these other parts that's displayed on that part over there. The next property is max distance, which basically tells us how many studs will it take for us to not be able to see any of the GUI elements inside of the surface GUI once we're at a specific amount of distance or however many studs we are away 
from the GUI elements are we to be able to see it. So the max distance right now is 1000 studs, but let's say we, we made it, but let's say we made it 50 studs instead of 1000. So right now we should be able to see the elements here, but if we decide to slowly move back, then we should no longer be able to see all of the elements that are contained inside of the surface GUI because we are now over 50 studs away from the GUI elements. But if we go back into view, then we should be able to see it again. So that's basically what max distance is. Another property we have is Z offset. And if you remember how the Z index property works, it's basically uh, in what order do you want to display these GUI elements uh, plastered onto the same screen or the same frame or folder or whatever you want to describe it. So it kind of works the same way here, except we're comparing two different, except this time we're going to be comparing surface GUIs uh, rather than any of the other elements that we've used in the past. So if let's say, so if I were to duplicate this surface GUI, and if I were to take this text label and change the background color to let's say green, then we should be able to see this green text label that's over our other text label in this other surface GUI. So if let's say our first surface GUI, the one that has a white text label, if we make that C offset one, then we should be able to see that the white text label is now shown in front of this surface GUI with the green text label. So it pretty much works the same way, but like I mentioned, this is now comparing surface GUIs rather than any of the other elements that we've worked in the past. So I hope you'll find great use with using that as well if you're working with multiple surface GUIs. Surface GUIs also have some lighting properties that basically determine how well we can see these GUI elements based on the game's lighting. So. Before we do that, what we're going to do is delete the second surface GUI that has the green text label in it, and let's go back to our surface GUI, and we're going to disable always on top. The first lighting property I want to introduce to you is this property called Light Influence, and this basically tells us how much do we want the game's lighting to impact how well we can see the GUI elements that are placed inside of a surface GUI. So by default, the value is one. So this basically tells us that this is completely impacted by the game's lighting. So if we, let's say, moved this surface part to a darker area, then we're gonna have a harder time seeing the surface part. So I'm just gonna take this part, move it down into the world. And as you can see, now that the sun is not in our view, um, this these GUI elements are a little bit harder to see. But if we decided to change light influence to zero, since this is a value from zero to one, then it's not going to be impacted by the game's lighting whatsoever. But there is something interesting that you may have noticed is that it now, is that when we changed our light influence, it added in this new property called brightness, which basically tells us how much light do we want these GUIs to emit now that the part is not influenced by the game's lighting. So, if we set this back to one, then our brightness property is gone. But if we set this to anything but one, then it's going to show the brightness property. So let's set this to zero and let's change this brightness property to something bigger, like, okay, like four, which not gonna lie, that is very, very bright. So that's an interesting thing to know about when it comes to brightness and light influence. Now, there is another thing that you should keep in mind is that remember how I said that we should turn off always on top. And the reason we should do this is because if we turn this back on, then the, first of all, the brightness property is gone. And also the light influence now doesn't change anything because by default now, uh, the light influence is going to be zero, regardless of where we see it inside of the workspace. It's not influenced by the game's lighting, and we can also see it wherever um, our screen is, as long as we're uh, in range. So that is one important thing to keep in mind when you're trying to change the the lighting properties of these GUI elements is to make sure that always on top is turned off whenever you're trying to uh, change the lighting. So that's basically how the, the lighting properties work for these parts, for these GUI elements. Before I introduce you to the next property, I'm going to add a text button to the surface GUI. So I'm going to hit the plus sign, insert a text button. And what I'm going to do is cover this button uh, on the entire screen. So I'm going to make the scales one comma zero comma one comma zero so that it's going to cover the entire front side of this part. 
Uh, I'm also going to make the text bigger by hitting text scaled so that we can see the text. Okay, so now that we have this button here, here's where I'm going to introduce the next property called tool punch through distance. That may sound like a really weird name, but it really does make sense once I show you what this actually does. Let's say I had my tool equipped. We can still press this button regardless of whether I do have a tool equipped or not. So as you can see, when I press the button, it'll still say down here that my mouse has clicked this button and we can go as far as we want and we'll still be able to press this button regardless if we have a tool equipped or not. This is a really interesting and very specific property known as tool punch through distance, which basically tells us that uh, with this number, which is basically in studs, how far do we want to be able to press this or interact with this GUI element if we have a tool equipped or not. So in this case with this text button, if we let's say had the studs as 10 rather than zero, then I will have the tool equipped and I should not be able to interact with this button unless I'm at a specific distance between uh, the button and my character. So now that I'm about 10 studs in range of this GUI element, I'm now able to interact with this button. But if I go out of range, then I will no longer be able to interact with this uh, element. But if I unequip, then I should be able to interact with the element regardless. So it's a very specific property, but I think you will find use uh, with this property if, this, if a situation like this ever comes uh, during your Roblox journey. And I hope that you will find use with this property. Okay, so now I wanna introduce you to two sizing modes that you can use when it comes to scaling your GUI elements contained inside of a Surface GUI. So if we have our Surface GUI selected, let's go down here and check the sizing category with two properties, pixels per stud and sizing mode. So by default, Roblox is going to set the sizing mode of the Surface GUI to pixels per stud, which basically gives us a pixel to stud ratio of how we want to scale our GUI elements that are contained in a Surface GUI. So by default, it's by 50. Now intuitively, what you might do is increase the size of the pixels per stud. But the thing about doing this is if we choose to do this, it actually makes it smaller, which is actually something pretty insane because you might think that if it's bigger, you might think that it would make the scale of the text bigger, but in actuality, it doesn't do that. It does it when you do it the other way around, uh, which will allow you to make it bigger, theoretically, if you made the pixels per stud smaller. And if you're using scales for your text button instead of offset, then you should be getting this result. Because I believe if you use offset, then it won't have the same uh, effect if you change the pixels per stud using the sizing mode. So that's basically how the first mode works, but if we hit this drop down with sizing mode, there's another property called fixed size. So if we press this, then it's going to give us two properties, an X and Y property that allows us to change based on offset with this canvas size. So once again, with pixels per stud, uh, the smaller the numbers are, the bigger the text will actually display on the screen. So for the X property, we can change it to 400 instead of 800. And then it would change the X value to be more wide since we made the, the X ver since we made the X value smaller. And we can do the same thing with the Y value, make this 300 instead of 600, and we can see it be bigger on the Y axis. Quote, so if we made it even smaller, quote unquote, then it's going to continue scaling this uh, however we so desire to be however big or however small we want it to be. And if we change the size of the entire model, then it's going to scale it alongside with it. If I'm close enough to it, then we should be able to see it being scaled. So it doesn't really matter which uh, sizing mode you use because both of them basically achieve the same result. It's just a matter of which one you prefer using over the other one. And that is basically how both the sizing modes work when it comes to scaling your GUI elements inside of a Surface GUI. But with that being said, that is basically going to be the end of this episode with Surface GUIs. If you're interested to learn more about how we were able to scale the size of these GUI elements, whether that would be on a part or on our screen, I encourage you to watch my scale versus offset video that's a part of this playlist for my GUI tutorial series. So with that being said, I hope you found this video to be helpful and I will see you in the next episode. Take care.